Inside the grand auditorium of the Galactic Council, a hum of myriad languages filled the air, echoing off the high, arching ceilings adorned with the emblems of countless civilizations. The room buzzed with the arrival of delegates from across the stars, each taking their seat at the vast circular table that fostered equality among worlds. Captain Elias Ford adjusted his uniform as he entered the council chamber, his eyes scanning the crowd for familiar species and potential new allies. Beside him, his longtime friend and scientific advisor, Dr. Leo Barnett, whispered updates about the latest arrivals. They brought in the Yaltrians this year, and it looks like the crinoids have a new representative, Leo muttered, handing Elias a digital tablet filled with dossiers. Elias nodded, his gaze fixed on the diverse array of beings. Any word on the Varelians? Last year's trade discussions left things a bit tense. As of now, no incidents. But keep an eye out. You know how quickly things can escalate with them around, Leo replied, adjusting his glasses. As they made their way to their designated area, Elias was greeted by a Markovian delegate, a towering creature with a serene demeanor. Captain Ford, it is pleasing to see you again. Your contributions last cycle were most enlightening. Thank you, Ambassador Gyrak. Humanity aims to contribute more significantly this cycle, Elias said, offering a polite nod. Gyrak's deep laugh resonated through his translator device. Indeed, I've heard rumors of a new human project that's causing quite the stir. Elias smiled, a hint of mystery in his eyes. Well, let's just say we've got a few surprises up our sleeve. As the initial greetings dwindled, the council's president, a sagely Xantherian known for his fairness, called the meeting to order with a gentle tap of his gavel. Esteemed delegates, we convene today under the light of unity that guides our council. Let us share knowledge and foster peace as we address the needs and challenges of our combined constituencies. Elias took his seat, his mind racing through his presentation. Leo leaned over. You ready for this? As ready as I'll ever be. Elias whispered back, his hand resting on the concealed data chip in his pocket containing the plans for the Titan. The first to speak was a delegate from the aquatic planet of Hydraxon. Esteemed colleagues, Hydraxon seeks new technologies to manage our rising sea levels. We offer and exchange our advances in hydro energy. Elias listened intently, making mental notes on potential collaborations, his eyes occasionally meeting those of other delegates interested in human technology. As the session progressed, each representative presented their planet's achievements and needs, weaving a tapestry of interstellar diplomacy that was both complex and fragile. Elias and Leo exchanged looks, their anticipation building. The human presentation on the Titan was the last on the schedule, and the chamber was ripe with curiosity and skepticism. Finally, as the last of the day's light faded outside the towering glass panels of the council chamber, it was Elias's turn to speak. He stood, smoothing his jacket, and walked confidently to the podium. The chamber fell silent, the delegate's attention fixed on him. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed beings of the Galactic Council, Elias began, his voice steady and clear. Humanity stands at the dawn of a new era in our contribution to this grand assembly. Today, we are excited to unveil not just a project, but a promise for a brighter, shared future. The murmurs in the crowd grew louder, a mix of excitement and skepticism. Elias clicked the remote, and images of a sleek, impressive spacecraft appeared behind him. I present to you the Titan, a vessel not of war, but of peace and exploration, designed to aid any civilization in need across our galaxy. The room erupted in whispers and gasps, the delegates leaning in to whisper amongst themselves. Elias's eyes met Leo's, and he nodded slightly, a silent acknowledgement of their first successful step toward changing the galaxy's view of humanity. As the questions began, Elias readied himself, knowing this was just the beginning. After the day's sessions, the delegates mingled in the sprawling atrium of the council headquarters, where bioluminescent plants cast an ethereal glow over the room. Elias, clutching a glass of sparkling mineral water, scanned the crowd for potential allies and curious onlookers who had questions about his presentation. Dr. Leo Barnett, ever the social butterfly, returned from a group of Ixian miners with news. Elias, you've definitely caught the attention of the Ixians. They're interested in the Titan's asteroid mining tech. Says it might just be what they need to stabilize their economy. That's promising, Elias replied. He noticed a lone figure approaching them a slender man in a sleek suit that shimmered with a subtle iridescence, indicating high rank or significant wealth. Looks like we've got another interested party. The man extended his hand as he neared. Captain Ford, I'm Dr. Harlan Z from the Tandrel Federation. I must admit, your reveal today was quite the surprise. 
My colleagues and I are particularly intrigued by the ecological systems on board the Titan. Elias shook his hand, pleased. Dr. Zeev, I'm glad to hear that. We aim to develop something that could assist with ecological recovery and sustainability. Maybe we could set up a meeting to discuss this further. Absolutely, Harlan agreed. I'll arrange for my team to meet with yours tomorrow. We're particularly interested in how these systems can be adapted for our terraforming projects on Tandril 4. As Harlan and Leo dove into a technical discussion, Elias excused himself to refresh his drink. At the bar, he bumped into another delegate, an unexpected one. Given her vibrant appearance and the two luminescent tendrils framing her face, typical of the enigmatic phalites, she smiled, her voice melodic. Captain Ford, your speech was the highlight of today's session. I'm Elira, an anthropologist from Phalus. Humans are quite the subject of study for us. Elias chuckled, handing her a glass of her planet's favorite herbal infusion. I'm flattered, Elira. Anthropology, you say? I imagine humans must seem quite primitive compared to phalites. On the contrary, Elira sipped her drink, her eyes twinkling with amusement. Your species has a certain unpredictability that's quite fascinating. Their conversation deepened, with Elias sharing insights into human culture and Elira explaining phalite social structures. You know, I'd love to learn more about your work, Elira. Maybe you could show me some of your anthropological tools sometime. I'd like that, she said, her tendrils brightening a sign of pleasure among her people. It's rare to meet someone so open to learning about other cultures. As the evening wore on, Elias found himself increasingly drawn to Elira's perspective and her refreshing curiosity. They agreed to meet the next day, away from the bustling crowd, to exchange knowledge more freely. Before we part, Elira said as the night wound down, I must ask the Titan, it's truly for peaceful purposes? Absolutely, Elias assured her. Humanity has learned from its past. We seek to be builders now, not destroyers. Elira nodded, seeming satisfied with his answer. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Captain. Good night. Good night, Elira, Elias replied, watching her leave. He turned back to find Leo grinning at him. Making new friends, Elias? Or maybe allies, Elias said thoughtfully, his mind already racing with possibilities. Let's see what tomorrow brings. The next morning, the Galactic Council chambers buzzed with whispers and covert glances towards Elias and his team. News of the Titan's capabilities had spread, and while many were impressed, others harbored suspicions about humanity's true intentions. Elias and Dr. Leo Barnett huddled over their breakfast, discussing strategy. We need to be transparent, Leo. If they sense we're hiding anything, it could undermine everything we've built up, Elias remarked, scanning the room. Agreed, Leo nodded. Transparency is key, but so is diplomacy. We need to tread carefully. As they strategized, Elias felt a tap on his shoulder. Turning, he saw Harlan Zeev, flanked by two colleagues. Captain Ford, we've looked over the preliminary specs you shared. Very impressive, but also quite advanced for a peaceful vessel. Elias smiled, extending his hand. Dr. Zeev, I'm glad you took the time to review them. I assure you, the Titan's design is focused on exploration and aid. Its systems are meant for ecological and humanitarian missions. Harlan's gaze was inquisitive. May we see it in action? A demonstration could assuage some concerns here. An excellent idea, Elias agreed. I'll arrange for a tour and demonstration. How about tomorrow? We'll be there, Harlan confirmed, a slight smile breaking his usually stern demeanor. Throughout the day... Elias met with various delegates, explaining the Titan's non-combative technologies and their potential applications. His efforts seemed to slowly turn the tide of opinion, or at least, pique further interest rather than suspicion. Later, Elias met Elira in a quieter part of the Council's gardens, a serene area filled with flora from hundreds of worlds. Elira, thanks for meeting me here. Away from all the chaos, Elira's tendrils shimmered lightly, reflecting her mood. It's a welcome break. I must admit, your project has become the talk of the council. Not everyone believes it's as benign as you claim. Elias sighed, looking out over the gardens. I know, and I understand their concerns. The history of space exploration isn't exactly peaceful. But we want to change that narrative. By showing, not just telling, Elira concluded, nodding. Show them the Titan in action, Elias. Let them see your commitment to peace. That's the plan, Elias confirmed. Would you come tomorrow? Your insight would be invaluable. I wouldn't miss it for the world. 
she smiled, her eyes conveying genuine interest. The next day, Elias, Leo, Harlan, Elira, and a select group of delegates boarded a shuttle to the orbiting dock where the Titan was moored. As they approached, the vessel's sleek lines and evident technological advancements drew gasps and murmurs of admiration. Once aboard, Elias led the group through the Titan, showing off its advanced navigation systems, ecological monitoring stations, and emergency aid facilities. These modules are designed to deploy quickly in crisis zones, whether they're environmental disasters or asteroid impacts, Elias explained. Harlan, closely examining the interfaces, nodded appreciatively. I must say, Captain, this is beyond what we expected. The potential for positive impact is significant. The Turk included in the main observation deck, where Elias had one last surprise. He activated the holographic display, which projected a simulation of the Titan responding to a hypothetical planetary crisis, efficiently managing resources and providing aid. As the display dimmed, Elias turned to the group, his expression earnest. The Titan represents what we believe to be the future of space travel, a vessel built not for conquest, but for compassion. The delegates clapped, some still reserved, but others visibly moved. Elira stepped forward, her tendrils glowing warmly. I believe many of us underestimated humanity's capacity for change. Captain Ford, you've given us much to consider. As the group disembarked, returning to the council, Elias felt a cautious optimism. The day's events had begun to bridge gaps, turning skepticism into a budding trust, or at least curiosity, about what humanity could offer to the galaxy. The sun cast a golden glow over the Titan, docked at the space station orbiting Earth. Its sleek design and quiet grandeur stood as a testament to human ingenuity and technological advancement. Elias and Leo were preparing for the day's demonstration, a critical opportunity to solidify the Council's faith in the Titan's peaceful mission. Everything needs to go smoothly today, Leo. We've got a lot riding on this, Elias muttered, checking the systems one last time. Don't worry, Elias. The Titan will speak for itself, Leo reassured him, patting him on the back. As the delegates began to arrive in small groups, Elias greeted each one personally. Dr. Harlan Zeev was among the first, accompanied by two technical specialists from the Tandrel Federation. Captain Ford, we're eager to see what the Titan can really do. Yesterday's presentation was impressive, but seeing is believing, Harlan remarked, his eyes scanning the vessel's exterior. Thank you for coming, Dr. Zeev. I think you'll find the operational capabilities quite enlightening. Elias responded, leading the way into the ship. Inside, the Titan's corridors hummed with the soft sounds of machinery and circulating air. The group's footsteps echoed slightly as they moved through the spacious halls toward the command center. Elias began the tour by showing the environmental control room. This area monitors and adjusts the ecological systems on board. It's crucial for long-term missions in space or assisting in planetary recoveries, he explained gesturing towards the large digital displays showing real-time environmental data. Leo chimed in, showing a holographic model of an ecosystem restoration project. Here's a simulation of the Titan in action, rehabilitating a damaged biosphere on a planet similar to Tandril 4. The delegates, particularly those from ecologically fragile planets, watched intently, murmuring amongst themselves about the potential applications. Next, Elias led them to the medical bay. The Titan is equipped to handle a wide range of medical emergencies. These facilities can be deployed to support planetary health crises or serve as a mobile medical center during disaster relief efforts, he detailed, indicating the state-of-the-art medical equipment and robotic surgical systems. Dr. Zeev's colleague, a specialist in bioengineering, examined the equipment with expert eyes. The integration of medical and environmental technologies is quite innovative. It's a holistic approach to planetary aid. As the tour continued, Elias introduced the crew members who were experts in their respective fields, from astrophysics to xenobiology. Each one shared insights into their work aboard the Titan and their hopes for future missions. Finally, the group reached the engine room, where the core of the Titan's power lay. The propulsion system is designed for efficiency and sustainability, using a hybrid of solar energy and quantum fusion. This allows us to reach distant sectors without the massive fuel loads that older models required. Elias described, his voice filled with pride. Harlan nodded appreciatively. It's more than just a ship. It's a mobile platform for galactic aid and research. The Tandrel Federation could learn a lot from this design. As the tour wrapped up, the delegates gathered in the observation lounge, where Earth hung in view, a beautiful blue gem against the backdrop of space. Elias took this moment to address everyone.
I hope today's tour has demonstrated not only the capabilities of the Titan, but also humanity's commitment to using our advancements for the greater good of the galaxy. We are ready to share, collaborate, and assist wherever we can. The delegates applauded. The earlier skepticism softened by what they had seen and heard. Conversations sparked around him. Discussions of potential partnerships and projects. As the group dispersed, Leo leaned over to Elias. Looks like you've made quite the impression, Captain. I think they see us as more than just newcomers now. Elias smiled, watching the delegates talk animatedly. It's a start, Leo. Let's see where it leads. With that, the day concluded on a hopeful note, with a Titan poised not just as a vessel of Earth, but as a beacon for interstellar cooperation and aid. After the success of the Titan's tour, Elias found himself with a brief moment of respite. He chose to spend it in the less frequented lower decks of the ship, where the hum of the engine provided a soothing backdrop. As he reviewed data pads filled with feedback from the delegates, the door hissed softly open. Dr. Leo Barnett entered, his face carrying a smirk. You can't hide down here all day, Elias. There are a couple of delegates looking for you. Seems like they have more questions about the Titan. Elias set the data pad aside, stretching his arms. Was it the medical tech or the propulsion systems this time? Neither, Leo chuckled. They want to know about the cultural exchange facilities. I told them you'd be the better man to discuss that. All right, let's not keep them waiting. Elias stood, brushing down his uniform. As they made their way to the cultural exchange room, they encountered a Lyra, the phalite anthropologist, who was waiting by the door. Her luminescent tendrils brightened as she saw Elias, a sign Elias had learned to interpret as a greeting. Captain Ford, I was hoping to catch you. I've been discussing your ship with my colleagues, and they're fascinated by the concept of a mobile cultural hub. Elira explained, her voice melodic and curious. That's exactly what we're heading to discuss, Elias replied, gesturing for her to join them. The cultural exchange room is designed to serve as a meeting place for different species to share and learn from each other. Inside the room, large screens lined the walls, each displaying different aspects of human culture from music to literature. In the center, holographic projector was capable of simulating various cultural environments from across the galaxy. Alira moved closer to one of the screens showing a classical music performance. This is beautiful. Music is such a fundamental part of cultural identity, isn't it? It is, Elias agreed. We believe that sharing cultures can bridge gaps between species better than any diplomatic negotiation. Leo nodded, pulling up another program on the screen. Here's something a bit more interactive. The screen shifted to display a virtual reality setup where users could experience marketplaces from different worlds. It's all about immersive experiences. Fascinating, Elira murmured, her tendrils flickering lightly. Do you think we could set up something similar for Phalite environments? Definitely, Elias responded enthusiastically. It could provide an incredible learning opportunity for both our peoples. Their discussion deepened, moving from cultural exchange to personal stories of their planets. Elias shared anecdotes of Earth's diverse landscapes and cities, while Elira described the bioluminescent forests of Phalus. As the conversation flowed, Elias noticed how easy it was to talk to Elira. There was a warmth to her that made the vastness of space feel a little less daunting. Eventually, the topic shifted to the day's earlier demonstrations. Your ship could change how we handle interstellar aid, Elira said thoughtfully. It's more than just technology. It's a new approach to how we see our place in the cosmos. Elias smiled, feeling a surge of pride. That's the hope. And perhaps can also change how different species see each other. As they continue their tour, exploring other facilities on the Titan, the foundation for a strong friendship was laid, a connection that might one day extend beyond just the two of them to their respective worlds. Their tour ended with a view from the observation deck, Earth shining brilliantly below. I must say, Elias, today has been quite enlightening, Elira said, her gaze lingering on the planet below. I'm glad to hear that, Elias replied, meeting her gaze and there's much more to share for both of us. As they parted ways, Elias felt a renewed sense of purpose. The Titan was not just a ship. It was a gateway to understanding, and perhaps to peace. With allies like Elira, the possibilities seemed endless. Back in the conference hall of the Galactic Council, the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. Word of the Titan's capabilities and the potential for cultural integration had spread, stoking curiosity and debates among the delegates. Elias stood at the podium, ready to delve deeper into the essence of the Titan project. Beside him, Leo adjusted the holographic displays, 
preparing to showcase the finer details of the Titan's operations. Dr. Harlan Zeev and Elira had taken seats in the front row, their expressions a blend of support and keen interest. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, Elias began, his voice resonating clearly through the chamber. Yesterday, we shared with you the technical and humanitarian capabilities of the Titan. Today, I want to reveal the deeper vision behind our creation. He paused, letting the room settle. The Titan is not merely a ship. It is a beacon for what we can achieve when we unite in purpose. Leo stepped forward, activating a series of images that illustrated the diverse environments and crises the Titan could respond to. As we've demonstrated, the Titan can provide rapid ecological and medical aid. But its true power lies in its ability to facilitate cultural understanding and cooperation. Elias continued, To further this mission, we propose the establishment of a cultural exchange initiative, using the Titan as a mobile platform where representatives from all civilizations can converge, learn, and collaborate. Murmurs of approval rippled through the crowd, but some skepticism remained. A delegate from the war-torn planet of Aurelia raised a hand. Captain Ford, while your project is commendable, how do we know this isn't just another strategic move by humanity to gain influence? Elias met the delegate's gaze squarely. I understand your concerns. Trust is something that must be earned. That's why we invite oversight and participation from the Council. Let this be a collective effort, not just a human one. Elira stood, her voice carrying softly across the room. I have had the privilege of experiencing the Titan firsthand. What Captain Ford proposes could revolutionize how we interact and support one another across planetary systems. Dr. Zeev added, The Tandor Federation is interested in participating in this initiative. The potential for technological and cultural synergy is too significant to overlook. Elias nodded, grateful for their support. Thank you, Dr. Zeev, Elira. We envision a galaxy where help and knowledge flow freely, where no planet must face disaster alone, and no culture remains an enigma to others. He turned to the rest of the delegates. We invite each of you to be a part of this. Together, we can set a course for a united future. The session ended with robust applause and a flurry of conversation. Delegates from various worlds approached Elias and Leo, expressing their interest or seeking more details. After the crowd thinned, Elias, Leo, Harlan and Elira convened in a quieter corner of the hall. This is a pivotal moment, Elias, Leo remarked, visibly relieved. It looks like they're really considering it. Harlan adjusted his glasses, his demeanor thoughtful. You've turned a lot of heads today, Elias. The Federation is on board, but there will be challenges. Coordination on this scale is unprecedented. Elira's tendrils glowed warmly. Phalus would be honored to host one of the first cultural exchanges. It's a small step towards something much larger. Elias smiled, energized by their words and the possibilities ahead. Let's start laying the groundwork. We'll need to establish protocols, schedules, and a system for sharing and protecting cultural artifacts and knowledge. The group agreed, their conversation stretching into the evening as they outlined the first phases of the cultural exchange initiative. What began as a presentation had evolved into a potential turning point for interstellar relations, spearheaded by the very vessel that had once been a subject of skepticism. As the stars twinkled outside the Council's expansive windows, Elias felt a profound sense of connection, not just to his crew or the Council, but to the galaxy at large. The Titan was ready to sail, and with it, a new era of understanding and cooperation might just begin. The Galactic Council Chamber was abuzz with renewed energy and a palpable sense of possibility. Elias Ford stood at the heart of the room, Surrounded by delegates engaged in spirited discussions about the newly proposed cultural exchange initiative. Beside him, Dr. Leo Barnett and Dr. Harlan Zeev conversed with representatives from various planetary systems, outlining potential collaboration models. Elias, the response has been overwhelmingly positive, Leo noted, a stack of digital tablets in his arms filled with notes and commitments from various species. We're seeing real momentum here. Elias smiled, scanning the room. It's more than I hoped for. Let's make sure we keep everyone involved and informed. This has to be a collective effort to really work. Harlan joined them, his expression serious but optimistic. I've been speaking with the engineering guilds from my federation. They're interested in providing technology for the initiative. It seems your vision has ignited a considerable interest across sectors. That's excellent news, Harlan, Elias replied, clapping him on the shoulder. Your federation's expertise will be invaluable. At that moment, 
Alira approached with a small group of delegates from less technologically advanced planets. Elias, these are representatives from the Outer Rim territories. They're interested in the initiative, but are concerned about their ability to contribute and benefit given their limited resources. Elias turned to the group, his demeanor welcoming. I'm glad you're here. Part of this initiative's goal is to ensure that all voices are heard and all needs addressed. We can provide technological support and training. Your cultural heritage and knowledge are just as valuable as any technology. One of the delegates, a tall, thin being with iridescent skin, stepped forward. We appreciate that, Captain Ford. We have much to offer and much to learn. We're grateful for the opportunity to be part of something so inclusive. As the meeting continued, Elias, Leo, and Harlan worked together, moving through the crowd, answering questions, and solidifying support. The trio paused as the council's president, a wise old Xantherian, called the session to order. Delegates, please, let us formalize our discussions, the president announced, his voice echoing softly through the chamber. We are on the cusp of a new era in our galaxy's history, one defined by cooperation and mutual understanding. Elias took the podium once more, addressing the assembly. With your support, we can launch the cultural exchange initiative from the Titan, transforming it from a vessel of exploration into a platform for unity. Every culture, every planet that joins us will be a cornerstone of this new era. The president nodded, signaling for a vote. One by one, the delegates cast their support, the affirmative responses displayed in a cascade of lights around the room. As the final votes were tallied, a resounding majority had agreed to the proposal. The chamber erupted into applause, delegates standing to shake hands, their faces animated with excitement and relief. After the session, Elias, Leo, and Harlan regrouped, their expression a mix of exhilaration and disbelief. We did it, Elias. It's really happening, Leo said, almost breathless. It is, thanks to every one of us here and in this room, Elias responded, his eyes sweeping over the chamber. This is just the beginning, though. We have a lot of work ahead to ensure this initiative succeeds. Harlan adjusted his glasses, a small smile playing on his lips. And succeed it must. The potential for positive change is immense. Let's get to work. The day concluded with plans for the first series of cultural exchanges, schedules for technological integration, and strategies for continuous communication among the involved planets. As the delegates departed, Elias stood at the window overlooking the council grounds, the stars above twinkling with promise. The Titan, once a mere concept in a shipyard, was now set to be the linchpin in a galaxy-wide embrace of shared knowledge and culture. As the delegates dispersed, the monumental task ahead began to set in. Elias Ford stood on the observation deck of the Titan, watching a shuttle's ferry participants back to their respective worlds. Beside him, Dr. Leo Barnett and Dr. Harlan Zeev were deep in discussion, laying the groundwork for the next steps. Elias, we need to set up a series of preliminary meetings to discuss the logistical framework. The first exchange is going to set the tone for all that follow, Harlan said, tapping notes into his device. You're right, Elias agreed, turning to face his colleagues. We need a detailed plan that covers everything from travel arrangements to cultural sensitivity training. Leo looked up from his own notes enthusiasm evident in his expression. I've already drafted a list of cultural experts from Earth who can help facilitate the initial exchanges. We'll need a similar list from our partners. Elias nodded, his mind racing with the details. Let's make sure we also include artists, musicians, and historians. This isn't just about technology. It's about understanding and celebrating our diversity. The three made their way to a conference room aboard the Titan, where they could spread out and tackle the burgeoning checklist of tasks. As they settled in, Elias initiated a call to Elira, who was eager to offer the Phalite support. Elira's image flickered to life on the screen, her tendrils glowing softly. Elias, I've spoken with a council of Phalus. We're ready to host the first cultural exchange. We believe our capital city's great library is the perfect venue. That sounds ideal, Elira, Elias responded warmly. We could start with an exhibition of Earth's and Phalus historical artifacts. What do you think? Wonderful, Elira replied. I'll coordinate with our historians and curators. We'll also prepare a series of lectures and workshops about Phalite culture and history. As the meeting progressed, Elias, Leo, and Harlan mapped out the timeline and resources needed. They designated teams to handle different aspects of the project, from logistics to public relations. Communication will be key, Harlan pointed out. We should establish a dedicated channel for participants to share updates and feedback. 
It might also help to have a regular newsletter or bulletin. Agreed, Elias said. Transparency will help build trust and keep everyone engaged. The meeting stretched into several hours, with breaks to review messages from other delegates offering resources, expertise, and venues for future exchanges. As dusk fell on the Titan, the team wrapped up their session, satisfied with the foundation they had built. Before they parted, Elias suggested a final moment to reflect on the deck. Standing together, the men looked out at the stars, each point of light a symbol of potential collaboration and friendship. This is just the beginning, isn't it? Leo Musatalot. It is, Elias confirmed. A new horizon for all of us. Tomorrow, we start making it a reality. With a plan in place and a galaxy of opportunities waiting, the Titan was no longer just a ship or a symbol. It was a home and headquarters for a bold new venture that could one day transform the galaxy. As they turned back to the interior, Elias felt a surge of hope and determination. Together, they would work to weave a tapestry of cultures so rich and vibrant, it would resonate across the cosmos for generations to come.